Welcome to Saturday Morning Tutorials! No one will be able to stop me now. Half the magic in the world! is now mine! You all came here seeking power over life. But all you will find here is death. There's only one who can oppose me. It's been a long time, Professor. I think it's time that we have ourselves a little reunion. All right, I just want to address everyone's confusion. I don't think there is any affiliation between the Unicorn Army and Professor Unicorn. I, I think they just share a name. Yeah, it's, it's a fairly common name. <laughs> <laughs> Who you is, bro? My name is Christopher <laughs> Kelly with ProductionCrates.com. Hello, my name is Adrian Jensen. I look like a vampire. I'd wear a lot of sunscreen that day. I look like one of the vampires from Blade. <laughs> you think the humans will ever accept a half-breed like you? Right here, uh, we've got some footage of the hidden one punching the ground, and she's really going for it too, man. We couldn't even stop her if we tried, and we did. We tried. Ooh, you all right? Oh, okay, oh, no. don't don't actually hit the ground. It's okay. It looks real. It does. <laughs> don't get hurt. <laughs> I just can't help it. <laughs> can you show it to the camera real quick? <gasps> yeah, Ouch! The only thing we could bring the hidden one down are those tiny little prickly things you get in your socks sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> And straight to the point, let's make our shockwave dome. You'll want to start with a solid, but this time instead of making the same size as your comp, go ahead and make the solid with a two to one aspect ratio. So if you're working with 1080 footage, that'll be 2160 by 1080. And in 4K, it would be 4320 by 2160. Had to do the math real quick. <laughs> Actually, there's nothing stopping you from going with 4K size, even if you are working with 1080p footage, all that it is gonna do is gonna make your noise, which we haven't added yet, <laughs> look a lot sharper. Let's do that right now on that solid. Let's apply some fractal noise. <laughs> Adrian, it, what? people use turbulent noise now. Oh shoot, okay, scratch that. Let's do turbulent noise. Oof, man, you just dated yourself hard. Oh man. <laughs> By now you probably know how to make this look the way you want it to. Just make some noise that looks good, man. We, we went with a dynamic fractal type and inverted it as usual. We do that all the time. That's what your dating bio says. I'm a dynamic <laughs> Fractal type, <laughs> but I am a little inverted as usual. <laughs> On top of that, we went with a linear wipe transition. Set the transition completion to 50% and wipe angle to zero. Feather it out. This is going to cut our solid in half. I think uh, good old Andrew Kramer taught us this technique. True, true. Oh no, he's not old. He's still young and spry. <laughs> not as old as we are with our <laughs> fractal noise. Fractal noise. Apply the CC sphere effect. That's going to wrap this solid around a sphere shape. This is why we wanted that two to one aspect ratio so it doesn't get all stretched out. We're gonna turn the radius to be as large as we can without getting the sphere cut off. You can mess with the rotation X control in the sphere effect to match the perspective of your footage. Under shading, we're gonna wanna turn the ambient up to 100 and everything else to zero. And this is effectively just getting rid of the shading altogether. Who needs it? Not us. Not us. We want this to have a sort of fre Fresnel effect. You did it. <laughs> yeah, I did. That means that it's more opaque on the edges, but more transparent in the middle. So for now, let's add a new black solid over this with a circle mask and feather that out. That's just gonna darken the middle a little bit. We don't wanna get rid of all of the noise in the middle, so we're gonna duplicate our original sphere layer and we're gonna move it up to the top. Let's make that a light and transfer mode and we're gonna mess with the brightness and contrast so that we're getting some noise, but less than before. We can also 
also keyframe the noise to go away over time as well. Another cool thing we did was animate the offset turbulence to travel upward. This makes it so the noise looks like it's climbing up the sphere. Alternatively, we could have animated it to the left or right to make it look like it's spinning. Whee! 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 Woohoo! Yeah. Okay, we can pre-comp all those layers and put it over top of our footage. We can use the pan behind tool to move the anchor point down to where it would meet the ground and just animate the scale to grow big. We'll go ahead and pre-comp that again and now we'll jump ahead a little bit and show you why we did that. Let's make an adjustment layer under the shockwave and apply the CC glass effect and we're going to use the shockwave as the displacement source. So the reason why we pre-comped it like we did is so that when we start adding glows and effects and stuff to the shockwave, it's not going to affect this glass displacement. There's no real right answers here, just play with the sliders until you get something that looks good. We want some subtle displacement as well as some highlights. Don't forget you can go into the lighting options as well to make the lighting match your scene. Get some get some realism going on in there. Heck yeah. Yeah. Real unicorns and demons <laughs> and shockwaves, you know, real. Back on that shockwave, let's set it to an add or a screen transfer mode. On ours, we added a turbulent displace turned down low just to get a little bit of extra detail as well as a vector blur turned up to about 10 to get a nicer look. Let's also add some glow to it. You know our glow tricks, you're gonna wanna use more than one glow. Let's use a curves to color it purple. And that's the shockwave part of the shockwave tutorial. Duh, duh, done. <gasps> ah! duh, 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 done. And if I was on film learning, I would say, and that's the shockwave part of the tutorial. Mm, done. For these bad guys flying through the air, we shot these on a green screen. It was actually a separate day on a separate location, but we made sure to shoot outdoors at a similar time of day so the sun and the lighting would be roughly the same. That's right, whenever you're you're shooting green screen footage that you wanna composite into a background, like at least look at your background and think about what the lighting looks like and try and set up some similar lighting, even if it's not perfect. If you just try, it's really gonna help you out a lot. All those guys were animated into place by hand Hand, which was the most time consuming process of this whole shot, including uh, keying and rotoscoping, you know, getting them all cut out and stuff. It was a, it was a real pain. You love rotoscoping. <laughs> Check out Adrian's rotoscope tutorial. Oh, that's true, that's true, that's true. Check out our pro rotoscoping course. Actually, I like rotoscoping. <laughs> Anyway, if you ever need to comp something into some grassy footage like we did here today, here is a tip. Make a new solid, draw a mask on it, and apply CC hair. Hey, that's Turn, a good idea. Yeah, it is. Turn the density up super high and add some length as well. Under the hair fall map, you're gonna wanna add some noise. Now you can use this as an alpha mat. Alpha mat. Actually, an alpha inverted mat on your green screen dude's feet. A little update on your uh, dating profile. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. I might be an alpha, but I'm really an alpha inverted. <laughs> ah, jeez. This is only the second time we have ever used CC hair. I'll give 15 points to anybody who can name the other tutorial. Ooh, yes, leave a comment. What was the other tutorial where we use CC hair? There are some plant assets on Graphics Crate that can be used for this exact same purpose, but it's good to know tricks like this yeah, if you're in a pinch. And aren't we always? <laughs> we wanted some rocks levitating off of the ground from the force of the impact. We decided to do this using Render Crate rocks and Element 3D. So we imported those rocks into Element and we made sure that there was two copies of each rock, uh, one copy on group one and one copy on group two. Back in After Effects, we set our group one particle count to 2000 and our replicator to be a sphere. We flattened it down and moved it to be on top of the ground. We then copied that group and pasted it onto group two. But of course we made some changes to it. We unflattened the sphere and we moved it to be above the ground. And then we just activated the animation engine. Animating from group one to group two is going to levitate those rocks off of the ground. Uh, we turned our smoothness to like 70 and our randomness to 50 to get a more organic look, but obviously you're gonna wanna play with these sliders and don't just steal our numbers, make it look good for your shot. That's how I dance. Smoothness of 70 and a randomness of 50. <laughs> <laughs> Alternatively, we could have made this in trap code particular. We could use a box emitter on the ground with the X and the Y turned up high, but the Z set to zero. The reason it's a box instead of a sphere is because a sphere would bunch up in the middle instead of having a uniform distribution. We want the emitter behavior to be explode and the particles per second to be up super high, like 50,000. And then the direction's gonna be directional and the X rotation is 90, so that's gonna make it 
float upward. The velocity is actually pretty high in our example at 900 with 100% randomness. That's how I dance. <laughs> But to counteract that, in the physics tab, we turn the air resistance up to 1.5, and that's gonna give us a gradual rise. That's our, what is this called again? Energy. The, the, cell. Power, the cell. Infinite power cell. Power yeah, cell. It's actually cool. infinite power hair gel. <laughs> oh, I'm so handsome. <laughs> The rest is just little details. We used Render Crate and Element yet again to add some flying guns since the Unicorn Army was holding guns in other shots. We used some dust blast effects from Footage Crate to add some realism. There are some dust effects on the site that shoot outward as well, which might've been cool, but didn't actually work for our shot, so we didn't use them. But feel free to try those out. We used Crate's camera shake script to add a jolt of camera shake to the beginning of the shot. There's also some 2D shockwave elements we could use to add some extra shockwave texture to the ground if we like. And that is the tutorial. This movie came out, you know, a while ago. So we decided to wait for things to cool down before making this tutorial. Way to have more tutorial. If you like the, the shots where the hidden one is sucking all the magic out of all the magic uh, artifacts, you could actually do this yourself too. You Using some of the soul stream effects which are available on footage crate you're just gonna want to draw a black solid behind those and control them with the puppet pin tool and you can use the puppet pin null generator script from production crate to make that a little bit easier to do and then we composited those using super comp which uh, we're not gonna get into a full tutorial on that here but it's a very cool plugin you might want to check out as yeah, well yeah shout out to red giant shout super comp giant. Is, is very very awesome super cool one of the best uh, That's what plugins they I've ever seen. It. probably won't make as much sense but they should have just called it super cool. Super cool. <laughs> anyway, All right, back to we only have like, uh, I think three or so episodes left of this season of Saturday Morning Tutorials. Don't cry. Okay, you can cry a little bit. We're gonna cry be doing private. other- don't, sh don't send us a video of you crying. Yeah, maybe just an audio file. Yeah. yeah. I can listen to it on the drive home. <laughs> <laughs> the magic of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You're really killing it. <laughs> Most fitting. Okay. <laughs> the magic. He's mine! There is only one. Is <laughs> now mine! We will be doing other shows. We got some awesome stuff coming. We're going to be doing a new SF Experiments and we just released the first episode of Crate's Camera Corner and Adrian, you got some stuff you want to do. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff, so stick around. Make sure and I guess subscribe if you <laughs> and, want to. And make it awesome. Yeah, 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 make it awesome. And I'm going to do that right now. Well, we'll see you tomorrow at lunch. <laughs>